So this is just a very short introduction to Irish myths and how you might think about them. Now, the most common way of thinking about Irish myths today is to sort them into four cycles. And I'm going to talk about those four cycles. And um, I'm also going to propose that two of them are relatively well known and two of them are barely known at all. There are two myth cycles that are, that are quite well known. And, uh, you know, if you ask someone to name a few figures in Irish myth from Irish culture, they would talk about the leading figures in these two myth cycles. The best known is the cycle that concerns Cúchulainn and the Tawn, the Ulster cycle. And most people within the country know that. It's covered in school. And so the story of Maeve and Aleel and the cattle raids and uh, the heroic defence of Cúchulainn and the fight with Ferdia is very much part of uh, kind of familiarity within Irish uh, culture and indeed in the GPO there's the statue uh, to uh, Cúchulainn, the dying Cúchulainn. Uh, so that's uh, that story of the, the warrior um, heroically defending the province against the invading army of Maeve is, um, is one of the traditions, uh, one of the mythic uh, cycles. The second is the um, uh, story, stories of the Fenian cycle and of Finn and Finn McCool. And uh, here's a slightly different warrior, um, a warrior who is uh, some see as the warrior outside the tribe, whereas uh, Cúchulainn is a warrior inside the tribe, defending the tribe. Uh, Finn and the Fianna are more of a, a feeling of the, the outlaw and, and uh, someone who's um, more uh, kind of living in a liminal space, traveling through and uh, with many similarities to the Ulster uh, uh, cycle of, of um, heroic achievement and, uh, you know, most people would know about the Salmon of Knowledge and... and um, that uh, encounter with Finnegus and putting the thumb on the blister on the cooking salmon. So that's the uh, Fenian tradition. And it's almost like those two are, are well known. There are two other cycles that are a lot less well known, the uh, mythological cycle, uh, not as well known, but um, in a way the foundation myth of Ireland. and. Uh, the, uh, there's two parts to, broadly two parts to that. There's the, um, the battles of Matura, and particularly in that there's the battle, uh, the kind of archetypal battle of um, uh, Lou and Bala, of, of good and evil, of the man of many skills, the Savaldanic, uh, Lou with the uh, one-eyed uh, and uh, uh, fierce, uh, terrifying Bala the Fomorian of the uh, Balor of the Evil Eye. But there's another uh, uh, tradition that, um, or another cycle of stories, or another element of those, which is the uh, Book of Invasions. And in there is a um, really interesting um, foundation story of the Irish, that it's not uh, like uh, Hesiod or some of the other creation myths of the world, the Irish are the people who came from somewhere else. And so going right back to the wonderful Sessa and her journey from Mero in Africa through uh, Egypt and across to the Black Sea and down to Israel and Palestine and then across to the Greek and, and world and uh, Roman and uh, German and Spanish before she came to Ireland. Effectively, she'd been on a wonderful journey. She'd seen almost all of the world. And then her partner, Finton, who uh, shape-shifting shaman. And both of those, I think, embody two types of wisdom. Uh, the wisdom of having seen an awful lot 
of the world and the wisdom of having lived for a long time. So in a way, right at the start of the uh, Book of Invasions is, is, is a, a wonderful wisdom tradition. And then uh, uh, there's a series of other invasions that are uh, in a way set in place um, some very other uh, different um, archetypal figures like uh, the Partholonians and the Nemedians and their wonderful wealth creating wisdom, uh, creating industries, brewing and tourism and dairy, creators of things. And then uh, the wonderful Theobolog with their um, kind of humble everyman quality, their bag carriers, very humble role, and yet they have the wonderful political wisdom of the uh, four provinces and, and the uh, idea of the sacred center. And then the Tua de Danon and Lu and, and the man of many skills, Lu and Dagda, and the people of the goddess Danu and what seems like a goddess culture. So there's a sort of shamanic and uh, goddess feel to these uh, stories that uh, uh, mean that they're very well worth exploring again. And uh, maybe they'll start to have the influence that they once did. And then finally, there's the king cycle. And um, the one thing about the king stories is they were once very central in the Irish tradition. But if you think about a country that's colonized, the one kind of stories they're not going to tell is king stories. They're going to tell rebel stories. They're not going to tell king stories. And so stories like about um, Finn and Cúchulainn would have been more popular, particularly Finn. But the king stories during that colonial period kind of went into abeyance. And uh, the problem is that, let's say the colonial periods ended, surely that's a time to reconnect with the wonderful examples of, of kingship uh, that's encoded in the stories of uh, Cormac McArt and Conor Moore and uh, Nile of the Nine Hostages and Laura Lynchuk and um, Mongan. So there's a whole body of king tales that hardly anybody knows. And so what we're talking about here is, is um, uh, a, a cultural reconnecting, as it were, with two little known myth traditions, the uh, mythological and the king and a kind of uh, perhaps critical reflection on the warrior uh, Ulster cycle and the uh, Fenian outlaw cycle. And just to see where, where are we? But in a way, the first task is to jump in and what the various journeys that we've put together are an opportunity to reconnect. And at the end of the day, what this is is a facilitated process because what ultimately matters is that the stories and these are the stories of the people they're communally created they're not divine stories they're not um, the stories of some great literary genius they're the people's stories and what we're looking at is uh, a re-immersion in these four cycles of myth